clothes, obviously. He has the sword, and you guys know if you've read the scriptures and you're the best fed men on this island, that he has the sword of Goliath. Now what else does he have? He's there with the promise of God. I thought that last song was so awesome because nothing compares to the promise of God. David's sitting in a cave with those three things. He has his clothes, he has a sword, and he has the promise of God. But at the same point, he's reached this low point of discouragement. There's nothing else. If we just remember what Tim just said, the history of David, that David was the youth. He was the youngest guy. Everybody, he had the worst job in the family. I don't know about you growing up. The worst job growing up for me was taking out the garbage. The worst job back then is you're a shepherd out in the fields. You're all the time with the sheep. But he was with the Lord because we also know that David had a heart after God. That he loved the Lord his God with all his heart, with all his soul, with all his mind, and all his strength. And God saw it. And when Samuel came to his house, Samuel looked at his brothers. And what did Samuel even say? He says, surely the Lord's anointed is before me, looking at the older brothers of David. And what does the Lord say to Saul, uh, Samuel? What does he say? He says, no, you're looking at the outside. But what does the Lord look at? The Lord is looking at the heart. And so he passes over and passes over and passes over. And finally, Samuel is forced to ask, is there anybody else? Because the Lord hasn't chosen any of these guys. Oh yeah, there's a little white guy out in the field. We'll bring that in. And he's anointing right there, King of Israel. And he's not only anointed King of Israel, but he's filled fresh with the Holy Spirit. 